hello! Recently I posted a video showing you the organization of my Daniel Smith colors and as you can see I have space for more! So I asked you, my lovely viewers, which colors you would recommend and I've gone through all of your comments, chosen three of the most popular watercolors that popped up and I went out and bought them. So let's check out what I got. Now there were more on the list but I'm sure you know Daniel Smith paints are horribly expensive so really I could only stretch to three so I've picked the three that had the most votes but there were a couple of others which I'm afraid missed out in this case. I ended up getting the most voted for one is Cascade Green. I think this one was equal or just a slightly close behind Quinacridone Coral. And finally Nickel Azo Yellow. So I thought these three might make an interesting triad and I will see what mixes and things I can get just out of these three colors and I will probably do a small painting with them as well. So I've never used any of these aside from testing them out on dot cards. It's been quite a long time since I've looked at the dot cards so I'm going into this not really knowing what they're going to be like. And of course I ended up buying the 15mm tubes. These are expensive and you can actually get all of these three in the 5 mil tubes. The problem is that all of my other Daniel Smith paints are in 15 mil tubes and it would just really bother me to see these tiny little 5 mil tubes next to all of the other ones which are 15 mils. Plus the other reason and the main reason I got them in 15 mil is that a 5 mil tube usually costs about half of a 15 mil tube so if you buy the bigger one you're essentially getting one 5 mil tube for free. <laughs> I just think I might as well get them once and not have to get them again. I don't know if that logic is any good. Let me know what you think. Is it a false economy to buy the big ones or should I just get the 5 mil tubes and then replace them as I go? I don't know. I'm here now with 15 mil tubes and I really hope I don't have buyer's remorse on these colors. If I do, it's your fault. <laughs> okay, let's check them out. Okay, first up I've got some half pans which I have labelled and I just used a plain old sharpie, one of those extra fine point ones, they're really good for labelling the half pans. I always put the name of the paint on there so that I can easily find them if I pull things out of boxes. And I've got my stirring stick, this is not my usual one, I do have another metal stirrer. For some reason it's gone walkabout and I cannot find it anywhere so it will be in my studio somewhere, I think I've just put it in the wrong place. But anyway I've got this one for now. I'm always scared opening a brand new tube because sometimes the paint is just so packed in there that it just all comes out as soon as you open it. I have made such a mess many times before. So yes this one's all in the lid as you can see there but it's not too bad. My tube is no longer full. Ah, that's always a sad feeling. And of course I managed to get it everywhere all over my hands and it's a stainer. Now I am looking at it. This has got phthalo blue in it which is the stainiest of all colors and it's mixed in with raw sienna which is a really interesting combination. So I could have probably made this on my own but I'm too lazy anyway. <laughs> I like things that are already pre-mixed so I don't have to do it. I've added a bit in here and I washed out the lid and dropped out some of the paint as well to try and use it all as much as possible. Uh, it always takes me forever to fill pans because I'm just so persnickety with not wasting any of the paint but when they cost as much as they do can you blame me? <laughs> this is what I like when they are nicely in the tube they're not all in the lid and you can just pour it out without making a huge mess hopefully. See this one's a pleasant consistency. Well, that's a very bright color I'm liking the look of that and I might just put some in here I'll use this as my palette I guess for the rest of the day. I've only put a miserly amount in but usually with quinacridones a little goes a long way so I didn't want to put too much and waste any. One last color nickel azo yellow. Ah oh, and that's a nice one too. <laughs> Yay two out of three is not bad. 
that one's quite a thick consistency and it's interesting sort of color it's kind of greenish so yeah I'm curious about that one I shall put my last one over in this corner I'll put these in here because I do not trust my cats at all in the studio at the moment. They've both been very naughty lately and they've been knocking things off, so I will definitely keep these safe in my tin. Now, of course, this is going to mess up my lovely, <laughs> neatly laid out sheet, but I thought I would put the nickel azo yellow up here. I will put the green here and maybe the quinacridone coral can go there for now until such time as I fill it up and then I can always repaint the swatch chart but I'm totally over swatch charts at the moment so I'm not doing it again <laughs> So I have my very battered looking etcher sketchbook. It's got cat hairs, it's got dirt all on it. I need to do something with this cover, but I am almost done with it. I am so close to finishing. I've only got a few pages left and I figured I may as well use a page spread in here. So I'm just going to do a bunch of mixes and things on this side and then I'll probably end up doing a painting over here as I usually do. I'm so excited to get new colours. It's been a while. I haven't really bought any Daniel Smith paints in a long time except for that one red but I just thought I would have a go with these because it would be a fun video as well as getting some nice new colours. There we go, I've sketched on some very dodgy looking Daniel Smith tubes. I figured it would be more fun than just doing a plain old square. Alright, let's start out with Cascade Green. Oh, that's a really pretty colour. Such an interesting mix of pigments in this one. Phthalo Blue and what was it? The Raw Sienna? Actually, you can see it in here. Can you see that phthalo blue has split out from the heavier raw sienna? And you can almost see it in the paint itself as well. It seems to be splitting up. I'll just add some more in. It seems to flow pretty well. And the mess tone is quite deep. Okay, next colour is Nickel Azo Yellow. I shall make sure I clean up my brush thoroughly first though, because that is just going to get into everything. Wow, that is really pretty. What a gorgeous colour. That is stunning. I see why people recommended this one as well. That's an amazingly intense yellow. I was looking to get the Indian yellow and I actually think that this one is quite similar to it so maybe I'll just stick with this colour now. <laughs> oh I like that one a lot, that's gorgeous. And last one is the Quinacridone Coral. That's a very vibrant colour, it's pinky red, quite nice. But there's almost like a slightly yellowish undertone to it. Quinacridone Coral is one that I have looked at over the years and been on the fence about getting because I had so many of the other reds but I think I'm glad I got it. It's pretty. Wow all three of those look so pretty together. I'm going to do some mixes just to see what I can come up with. I was thinking of making either a triangle or a circle to see if I can get all three colours to combine so let's see what we get. These are amazing colours together. Wow, I like them all. I'm glad you guys chose these colours for me because they look really great together. I'm happy about that. What I think I'll do next is just a big old blob of all three colours to see what kind of neutral it will obtain. Let's get into doing some actual paintings with them because that is where the fun begins. 
These colours made me think of tropical things, so firstly I did a warm-up painting of a cocktail on a beach. You know, back when travelling to exotic locations was a thing. Ah, what I wouldn't give for one of those right now, I tell you. We've been in six lockdowns in Melbourne and I am just completely over it. But anyway, moving on to the painting. The quinacridone coral is such a pretty colour, I love it so much. I'm really glad I did eventually add this into my collection of reds. It has a much warmer pinky undertone than any of the other ones that I have, so it's a really nice addition. And I went in with some of that nickel as a yellow on the background as the sand, and it's just a bit bright, but that's okay. I really needed some bright colours today. It has been a long and dreary winter in Melbourne. But that sand was a bit too bright, so I ended up mixing a neutral colour out of all three of them, and this made a much better looking sand colour. I tried to put in a bit of shadow, it didn't quite work, but you get the idea. And of course, the background is supposed to be blue, but I have green, so I just used the Cascade green for the ocean and the sky as well. The one good thing though with this colour is it did actually split out and I was able to pick up some of the thalo blue without too much of the raw sienna in there and it <laughs> worked really well for the sky so it's a surprisingly versatile colour. If you let it sit there for a while it will split apart quite significantly. And then I went over the glass again with some more quinacridone coral and added in a bit of nickel as a yellow just to give it a bit of a lift and not make it so flat. And yeah, the top of the glass didn't work out too well. I was trying to define it from the background, but it wasn't quite dry and it kind of merged in a little bit with the quinacridone coral as well. Oops. <laughs> Moving on to my main painting. And of course the camera went out of focus for a little while, but it's only briefly, and I did catch it relatively early, thankfully. But I was thinking coral from the quinacridone coral, so why not paint a clownfish? The mix of the quinacridone coral and the nickel as a yellow is an excellent one for making a really vibrant orange and I mixed it on the paper rather than the palette so that I could get a variation in colour so it's not all just plain orange, you know you get some coral, you get a bit of yellow and then other parts make that nice orange. It gives a lot of depth to a picture if you have different colour variations. Painting the anemone was the hardest part of it. It did get a bit blurred in together because I was being impatient and didn't want to wait for each tentacle to dry individually. And I was adding in some of the cascade green to the quinacridone coral to get a variation in tone and colour. Also to try and split up each individual tentacle so it wasn't just one massive blob. And later on it was looking a little flat so I went in with some of the nickel as a yellow to add in a few highlights. I love that colour so much, it is such a gorgeously transparent yellow. Really great, I'm so glad you guys recommended it for me. Thank you so much for your recommendations, they are all fantastic colours, I really love them. They look great together and they will make for excellent additions into my main Daniel Smith palette. Because I was having trouble making a black from these three particular colours, I did end up going over the clownfish with a black ink pen at the end, just to use that as the black rather than trying to mix a dark colour. Because all three of these are fairly light in value and so it was just impossible to make a very dark black anyway. But they looked really pretty in the background, the green and the yellow merged in really well. And I just tried to add in a little bit of texture to the background to make it look like there was coral kind of going off into the distance. And overall I'm really happy with how this one turned out. It's a bit dodgy down in that anemone area, but the clownfish was good and I really liked just how nice and soft the background ended up being. And here's me going in with some black pen just to define it all.
so that's me finished thank you all so much for your recommendations i really like these three colors i think they look pretty together and i was able to get some paintings out of them i mean obviously i'm not just going to use these three colors exclusively i am going to include them in my much larger palette of colors but it was just fun doing some limited palette paintings just to see what i could come up with and then i have my main painting over here of the clownfish i'm quite happy with it this got a bit messy down here but i think the addition of a few lines just kind of lifts it a little bit i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you enjoyed seeing the new colors and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and click that subscribe button. And I will see you all again really soon in my next video. Take care out there. Swatch you later. Bye.